I'm going to show you all something. Watch this. Proverbs 6, and we're going to start at verse 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 6. six. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Now, Solomon is saying, examine him. When he says go to the ant, he's saying examine the ant. Thou sluggard means you lazy brother, you lazy sister. Look at an ant. Now, you might read this and go, I don't understand what Solomon's talking about. He's talking about us in these, these evil days. Watch this. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide. Which have no guide. Overseer or ruler. There's nobody telling the ant, hey, do this or do that. Watch what the ant does. Provideth her meat in the summer and gather her food in the harvest. What does verse 8 say the ant does? It prepares. It prepares. It gathers its food when? In the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. For what? For when winter comes, you know what we do? I'm always going to have a job. I don't got to do nothing with no food. I just sit around. Right. Now food gets scarce. They say got news reports. All meat's being contaminated. Tyson meat's being contaminated. Your chicken gone. Wendy's ran out of chicken. Popeye's running out of chicken. You're busting each other upside the head. But you haven't prepared. None of us have prepared. Now the winter's coming. This is, we are, this is about nation building, not self-absorbed rhetoric. We're to help and grow the nation. Read that again, get a liar. Yes, sir. Verse 7, which having no God, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer. Provides her meat in the summer. And gathereth her food in the harvest. We got to be like the ant. We got to be like the ant. And God is trying to help us do that thing. Get your minds right. Prepare in advance. Don't, just don't sit around and say the Lord's going to rain food from heaven like you did with during Moses' time. Oh, here come a quail. Here's some manna from heaven. But don't y'all realize in, give me that, uh, get a lie in 2nd Ezra uh, chapter 1, I believe, where it says we shall see no signs in the last days. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. 2nd Ezra chapter 1, verse 35. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come. That's us. We're the ones coming back into the truth now. Which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me. Right. We haven't heard that God in Christ is black. We didn't hear that. For all our lives we heard it was a Caucasian. But yet we believe in him. Now we believe. Go ahead. To whom I have showed no sign. See that part right there? To whom I have showed no sign. So you're waiting for man to come from heaven. It ain't going to happen. Especially you black women always waiting for a miracle. Can you lay hands on me and do and, and that power ain't here no more? It was temporary. Was that a good liar? Yet they shall do that I have commanded them. There's one power that the Lord has given us in these last days. Was, did you finish that? Yes, sir. Give me that real quick. Uh, Joel chapter 2. I think it's verse 28. Yes, sir. This is the power. Beside prayer, brothers, I mean, prayer works. It does work. So I'm not saying don't pray. We have to pray for the Lord to hear us. Joel 2.28, is that the right verse I want? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your Wait, son read the verse above it, because y'all might be thinking Chinese and Japanese and Arabs is talking. It ain't talking about them. Yes, it ain't talking about the enemies of God. It's talking about the Israel. Read verse 27. Verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God. And none else. So he's in the midst of Israel. He's our God and nobody else's God. You all understand that thing? Yes, sir. Stop trying to include the Arabs and the Chinese and the white man. He's not their God. Satan rules over them. Watch this. And my people shall never be ashamed. That's right. Come on. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So the all flesh has not changed the subject Changed the subject from verse 27. The thought is continuing. So the all flesh is of the Israelites. Go ahead. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So the sons and daughters shall prophesy. Meaning bring the understanding of the Bible out. Go ahead. Your old men shall dream dreams. And the oldest of us shall dream dreams of things to come. Go ahead. Your young men shall see visions. Your young men shall see visions of what things shall come. Go ahead. And also upon the servants. The servants are still going into the Israelites. We're servants here. Go ahead. And upon the handmaids. And, and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. 
blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. So before the great and terrible day of the Lord, meaning before Christ return, he says, we're going to prophesy. We're going to dream dreams and see visions. This is the power the Lord has given us. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Stop waiting for manna to fall from heaven. Stop waiting for the dead to be raised. That ain't ha That type of stuff ain't going on right now. Go back. Proverbs 6. You all right, Deacon? Yeah, y'all putting too much smoke up here. Proverbs 6. Yes, sir. Where was you at? Verse 8? Yes, sir. Verse Read eight. that again. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 8. Provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. So what is that telling us, brothers, to do? Prepare. Prepare. When you go to the stores from now on, don't just buy one roll of toilet tissue. Don't just buy one little uh, thing of carrots and cabbage. Y'all better prepare. I'm telling you, better prepare. Stock up. Stock up. Buy them big freezers. Go ahead. Don't get nervous now. I know you. What, what, what's going to be about? <laughs> hey, me, I took the wife and my daughter to, uh, what's the name of that store? Kunlan, I call it. It ain't Kunlan. What's the name of it? Numde Moon. Y'all know that store? The farmer's market. You know they couldn't go in without a mask? It was five vehicles. We drive in. They said, if you ain't got a mask, you can't shop here. Everybody had to leave. And we had to find some damn rags. So what the hell is this? Imagine Esau can do what he want. These nations can do what they want. We don't have five acres of land where we could grow our own stuff. We ain't got that. I wish we did have that, but we ain't got that. Where we at, Gedaliah? Verse 9. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 9. How long without sleep, O sluggers? See, God is calling us sluggards, lazy bums. Go ahead. When will thou arise out of thy sleep? When are you going to wake up, black man, black woman, Latin man, Latin woman? Wake up! Stop sleeping! Danger's all around you when you sleep. Go ahead. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. And what's going to happen? So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth. So poverty is going to come upon us as one that traveleth. Okay, go ahead. And thy want as an armed man. And thy lack, the lack, we're going to be like we got robbed. As an armed man, that's what it's talking about. We're going to be like we got robbed. From there, from there. Let's go back. To Ecclesiasticus. I mean, Ecclesiastes. We was there. Verse 4. Again. Let me look at it. Let me look at it with you. Verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 3. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. We seeing the keepers of the house trembling right now. Their fear is upon them. Go ahead. And the strong men shall uh, bow themselves. Uh huh. And the grinders cease. We seeing grinders cease. Because they are few. Because they are few. Go ahead. And those that look out of the windows be darkened. Right. Their fear is taking hold on people. Come on. And the doors shall be shut in the streets. Don't y'all see doors of operates? I'm stuttering now. Businesses is closed in the streets. Y'all don't see this? Sir. Go ahead. When the sound of the grinding is low. When the sound of work is low. Go ahead. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. You're waking up early in the morning. And all. And all the daughters of music shall be brought low. There's no sing. What, what do y'all say? You got these dumb black Christians singing with Kirk Franklin. And people at home quarantined can't go out, can't make ends meet. I mean, what are they singing about, you black ashy devils? There's no rejoicing. Go ahead. Also, when they shall be afraid. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Also, also, when they shall be afraid of that which is. Which is not high. No, which is high. Which is high, sorry. And fears shall be in the way. Mm -hmm. And the almond tree shall flourish. And the grasshopper shall be a burden. Meaning crops going to be destroyed. That's what I'm going into right there. And that which is high is the Lord. Go ahead. And desire shall fail. All your desires shall fail in these evil days. Go ahead. Because man goeth to his long home. Man goeth to his long home refers to death. Hold that. Give me Job 30 and 23. The book of Job, chapter 30 and verse 23. For I know that thou will bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living. That's the, death is the house appointed for all living. So when we go back to Ecclesiastes 12 and bottom of verse 5, where it says, because man goeth to his long home, read on, 
and the mourners go about the streets. Right, it's going into death. That's the long home. And the mourners go about the streets. People are going about the streets mourning now. Go ahead. Hoping that the cities open up. They may, they may not. Let's see. Verse 6. Or ever the silver cord be loose, mm -hmm. or the golden bowl be broken. That means good times. Before the silver cord be loose means before the, the good times is gone. Or the golden bowl be broken, meaning before good times is broke. Go ahead. Or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. Before, Because when you have a pitcher at the fountain, you can get water. But it's, if it's broken, you can't get water. So it's saying you better remember God while things is good. Go ahead. Or the wheel broken at the cistern. Right, because if the wheel's broken at the cistern, you can't pull up water out of the well. So you better remember lo the Lord before these evil days come. This is what he's saying. Go ahead. Verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. That's, give me that in Genesis 3.19. That's talking about us. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Right. So let's go back to Ecclesiastes 12 and 7 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Saith the prophet. This is Solomon, King Solomon. He's the preacher. He's the prophet. Go ahead. All is vanity. Mm -hmm. And moreover, because the preacher was wise. Because the prophet was wise. What did he do? He still taught the people knowledge. That's our job. Just like Solomon's job was, it's our job to still teach the people knowledge. Go ahead. Yay. He gave good heed. He gave good heed. And sought out and set in order many proverbs. That's our job, to sit down and read the Bible and set things in their proper order. Go ahead. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Come on. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, mm -hmm. which are given from one shepherd. Meaning the words of the Lord are steadfast. That's what it means when it says the words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assembly. God's wise words will not are immovable. Go ahead. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. There's no end of making many books about God. You're always going to find people's personal thoughts about God. He said, there's no end of those things. Go ahead. And much study is weariness of the flesh. And much study of those books is a weariness of flesh. It's a waste of time. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Believe it or not, all those books about God all go against God's commandments. All those Christian books are against God's commandments. Read that again. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So whatever we do on this earth, God's going to bring it into judgment, whether it be good. Every, even the secret things that we, we all do, you know what you do when you're alone? The Lord said, I'm going to bring that into judgment. Give me that 2 Corinthians 5, 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. So my son, what did you do with the food that I sent for your starving brothers in secret? And she says, well, Lord, I threw it away. I don't know why I did it. I just threw it away. Uh, sorry. Sorry, Lord. Read it again. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. For, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Mm, so that's saying the same thing Solomon said. From there, give me uh, Sirach 38. No, 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 no. Uh, no, no, yeah. We talked about preparing, right? We got to prepare for the winter. Now, we often use Proverbs 6 for telling brothers and sisters, get a job. Don't be a bum, get a job. But it's, we could, there's a lot. It's just saying prepare. There's a lot of things we can prepare for. Food. How about our health? We can prepare for our health. Aren't we trying to do that now? We are not going to be known as the fat camp wearing leather headbands. I'm serious. We ain't going to be called the fat. You know them campers, they all fat. If you don't weigh 400 pounds, you can't join this camp. Well, to hell with you. Thank God, too. 
That's a stigma on Israel, your diabetes camp. The hell is it? We ain't going to be known as that. Give me Sirach 38, verse 4 and 9. Sirach. Yes, sir. The book of we Sirach. better burn the fat, brothers and sisters. Burn the fat. The book of Ecclesiasticus, or Sirach, chapter 38, verse 4. The Lord have created medicines out of the earth. See that? The Lord creates medicines out of the earth. The herbs we eat, we got to eat medicine foods. Oh, the Lord almost had to put me to death to get me to see that thing. Lord have mercy. Come on. The Lord have created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. And he that is wise will not hate them. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. My son, in thy sickness be not negligent. So when you sick, don't be negligent. Go ahead, but do but, what? But pray unto the Lord, and he will make thee whole. Prayer is the first thing we got to do. That's the first thing. That's why we got to pray daily, pray daily, pray daily. And as we eat to live, opposed to live to eat. See, yeah. We got to learn to live. We got to learn to eat to live and not live to eat. So if you can't see your friend, you are proof that you live to eat. If there's a sandwich on the table, you're going to eat it. You ain't even hungry. You just want to eat it. There's a fry, piece of fried chicken on the floor. You're going to eat it. You ain't hungry. You're just going to eat it. Now, there's another test. There's another test. If brothers... If you go like this, get the camera on me. If you do this, and your chest goes like that, you're fat. I'm serious. Your chest should be stable and move with your shoulders. But if it goes opposite, or like, no. If you jump up and down and your chest goes like this, you're fat. <laughs> you better burn the fat, brothers. Now, I'm not trying to make mockery of nobody. I'm, I'm, hey, aren't we hitting the gym now? We're trying to be examples to all of you. Let's burn the fat. And we, we ain't talking about one brother or one sister. We all out of shape. We all got, you trying to drop 40? You dropped 15 already? You got two more years to go, right? <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, praise the By summer, I hear that, bro. We got to stay with it. Give me that Proverbs 15, 17. Now, notice, I ain't mentioning the sisters because you know they're very emotional. They don't want to be told they're fat and out of shape. They hate that thing. Well, what's in the mic? You know, there's a sister accused me of calling her fat. I don't even know who she is. <laughs> That's called sister. guilt. Guilt. Don't worry, sister. We all fat. We all got to burn. Hey, sir, can somebody make a t-shirt, burn the fat? Burn the damn fat. Burn the fat. Put a piece of chicken with some fire around it. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Proverbs 15, 17. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 17. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. Y'all see that? I want y'all to understand this thing right there. The Bible says, better, read that again. Better is a dinner of herbs. Better is a, because I know eating herbs now, sometimes I'll be eating and I'll be like, I want some fried chicken. I want some macaroni and ch I want some Judah food, in other words. But the Bible says, what? Read it again. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is. You, better is a dinner of herbs where love is. Because that love, when you eat them herbs, is going to heal your body. It's going to make you whole. Go ahead. Then a stalled ox. Now, we love some, some ox. That's beef. Then beef. Go ahead. And hatred therewith. And hatred therewith. Now, you may think it's just talking about people around you hating your guts. But remember in Sirach, it talks about overeating of meats causes choler. C-H-O-L-E-R. Yeah, that word cola has two meanings. It means diarrhea and it means anger, strife. So the Bible is saying it's better to have a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and a lot of beef. And you got hatred, you got cholera therewith. From there, give me uh, Sirach 37, verse 29 and 30. Sirach 37. Everybody that, all the sisters that's fat now, they mad and they... They 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 uh, disconnected from the internet. It's all right, sis. We love you. We're trying to save your life, and you want death. Okay, roll around then and eat your chicken. Go ahead. <laughs> Sirach thirty-seven, verse twenty-nine and thirty. Sirach chapter thirty-seven, verse twenty-nine. Be not insatiable in any dainty thing. That's sweet. Too much sweets will lead to diabetes, brothers and sisters. 
uh, always drinking. You have them sweet damn drinks. We was on a cruise, and one brother, you know I'm talking about OC, always drink Kool-Aid, lemonade. Oh, I need this. Put a lot of sugar in it. Put more sugar, more sugar. That's a, a sugar drink. We kept telling, hey, that's too much sugar, so you better stop it. The Bible says, read that again. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. Be not unsatiable in any sweet thing. Go ahead. Nor too greedy upon meat. Nor too greedy upon meats. Gotta have that chicken. Gotta have that beef. I need that thing. Go ahead. For excess of meats bringeth sickness. Too much meat bring, will make you sick. It breaks down the body, God is saying. Go ahead. And surfeiting. And will, surfeiting means excess. Will turn into cola. Will turn into cola, which is diarrhea, strife, and anger. From there, give me 1 Timothy 4 and 8. I said this on a shout out Tuesday and people got confused why I said this thing. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. For bodily exercise profited little. So, now remember, this ain't Paul per se speaking. Who's speaking through Paul? Christ is speaking through Paul. He says, bodily exercise profits little. Why? Because the little is our body. We got to, that profits us. Profits us. It doesn't profit gargantuan, but it profits little. Strengthen, keep your body healthy. That's what Christ is saying. Go ahead. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness but is, godliness, what? is profitable unto all things. Having promise of the life that now is. You know, who, let me tell you, I was going to ask a question why he say this, but I'm going to tell you why he said this. Holes, we coming right back here, Gedaliah. What was going on? Go to uh, First Maccabees or Second Maccabees. Second Maccabees. Y'all know where I'm going. Second Maccabees chapter, is it four? It's been a while. Nope, not that. Eh. Second Maccabees chapter 4 and verse 14. The book of Second Maccabees chapter 4. No, start at 12. I like 12. Yes, sir. Second Maccabees chapter 4 verse 12. For he built, he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under, it, under his subjection and made them wear a hat. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. That the priest had no courage to serve anymore at the altar, but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hastened to be partakers of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise. In the place of what? Exercise. Exercise. That's the gym. Go ahead. After the game of discus called them forth. So Israel got into bodily exercise. Why? Because we wanted to join the Olympics. That was a big thing from the time of the Greeks. That carried on to Rome. So when we get to 1 Timothy 4 verse 8, Paul's not mentioning this for no reason. He knew Israel was into exercising, wanting to join the Greek games. Read that again. 1 Timothy 4 and 8. For bodily exercise profited little. That's why he said that. Go ahead. But godliness is profitable unto all things. He says what you're ignoring is the godly part. You're so busy, occupied, and physical... He said, I'm not saying don't do it, but the better part of it is the godly side. Read that again. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So that shows that the, the spirit works with the body and the soul. You need them two things. We need the godliness and we need the bodily exercise. We cannot ignore it. If your body begins to break down in corruption, your spirit can't stand strong. And likewise, if your spirit is weak and you got a strong body, the two don't, the two must work together. Let me show you another precept. Third John verse two. The, the body and the spirit go hand in hand. Third John verse two. This is not uh, St. John chapter three. We are in third John. Everybody understand the difference. I don't want nobody. I'm confused. I don't see that in my Bible. Go ahead. Third John verse two. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Watch and, this. And be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. He says, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So we was ignoring our health here in third John. 
He says, I wish above all things that, that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Something was obviously wrong with the health of the Israelites here at this time. Even as thy soul prospers. Why? Because they were busy in the scriptures but ignoring their health. Ignoring their health. So we got to build our health up. Give me that. Uh, uh, give me the one about uh, in Sirach. It might be 37 or 38 about um, the, your body must be of good constitution. Yes, sir. Uh, Sirach chapter 30, verse 14. Wait, wait, let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Let me get it. Sirach 30, you said? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Sirach 30. Yeah. Go ahead. Sirach chapter 30, verse 14. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, that's it. Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution. Constitution means health, physical health. Go ahead. Than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. Like that white man who's the smartest man in the world, they said. I Can you find a picture of him, Elisha? You know that little retarded white man that they said is the smartest man. And he's in a wheelchair. You know, he's, he looked like he got crushed by a compactor. What's his, well, I, I can't remember his name. Yeah, that's him. He, was, he said there's no God. And God said there's no Stephen Hawkins. Shazam, he's dead. This guy's body was jacked the F up. But they said he was so wise, so all knowledgeable. But look at his body and he was rich. Right. He's jacked up. I don't know, I don't know about you. I don't want to be like that. Lord, have mercy on my soul. I don't want to be like this. No, no, no. Look, look with, him, with his wife when he got married. Right there. He blow that up big. He was able to walk, able to do jump, jump up and down. He was ugly as hell back then too. But <laughs> my point is his body began to deteriorate. And now go to the, the wheelchair one. Now I'm sorry. I, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I know somebody's offended right now because you just love the enemies of God so much. And this is what happened. He got, his body got destroyed. We Cannot be like, can you read that again, get a lie? Verse 14 again. Yes, sir. So rock 30 and 14. Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution. That's health. Than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. This guy right here was a rich man afflicted in his body. It's better to be poor and have a good, strong body. Go ahead. Verse 15. Health and good state of body are above all goals. So Christ is, and I'm saying Christ because he's speaking through Sirach. Christ is saying health and good state of body is above all gold. Go ahead. And a strong body above infinite wealth. Christ says a strong body is above all the money in the world. That's what 1 Timothy 4 and 8 was saying. Go ahead. There is no riches above a sound body and no joy above the joy of the heart. Mm -hmm. Death is better than a bitter life or a continual sickness. Give me Daniel chapter 1, please, in verse 5. Book of, book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 5. And the king appointed them a daily provision. Now, this was in the Babylonian exile. Go ahead. And the king appointed them a daily provision. The king appointed Daniel and the rest of Israel a daily provision of food. Of the king's meat. Uh, of the king's meat. That's what we want to look at, the king's meat. Go ahead. And of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. So he said, let's nourish these Israelites with the king's meat, the king's wine for three years. And at the end of three years, they can come and stand in the court of the king. See, back during ancient time, you couldn't just run up and talk to the king. You had to be physically and mentally prepared in case he asked, spoke to, whatever. You had to know what you were talking about. That's what verse 4 is going into. I didn't read verse 4, we'll talk about wisdom. But verse 5 goes into their physical health. Read on. Verse 6. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar. So the same thing that happens here in America in the lands of our captivity, when we go, went into captivity, our slave masters changed our names. So here in Babylon, they did the same thing. Go ahead. And to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. You ever notice Christians never give the Hebrew names of our forefathers? Even us growing up in church, I can remember off the top Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know it off the top because in Christianity, they teach you the slave name. They don't teach you to go back to your original name. Oh, no, no, that's forbidden. Go ahead. Verse, verse 8. 
Say it on the mic. Nobody can hear you. I told them they should take that $1,200 Donald Trump, give them and change their name. That's right. And tell Donald Trump, thank you. Yes, they scared. They scared. They scared. Yeah, they scared. Go ahead. Watch verse, what Daniel did. Verse 8. Verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. He didn't want to eat the king's meat. Whether it was pork or beef, he knew it was sacrificed to idols. Daniel said, I'm not going to eat the meat. Go ahead. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs. See that? He requested. He requested of the prince of the eunuchs because Daniel was a eunuch and the men went with eunuchs. Go ahead. That he might not defile himself. Watch this. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Verse 9 goes when Christ said, make friends with the mammon of unrighteousness. Don't always run around and call people that either you work for or you need in business practices the devil. Don't do that thing. You got to use wisdom. This is what Daniel did. That's why verse 9 again. I want you to see this thing. Verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. This is the same thing that happened with the forefather Joseph. Remember the slave master loved Joseph. Right. Joseph wasn't stealing. He wasn't robbing. He wasn't calling them names. He did what he had to do to survive. And he did it excellently. Go ahead. Verse 10. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king. So the prince of the eunuchs said, I fear the king. Go ahead. Who have appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? He said these other Israelites are eating the meat and drinking the wine. They're going to be healthier than you. If, they look, if you look sickly, the king's going to cut my head off. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Mm -hmm. Then said Daniel to uh, Melzar, whom the prince of eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. And let them give pulse to eat and water to drink. Can we look up that word, Elisha? Can we look that word up? Officer Elisha, can we look that word up, pulse? Can you see that? Yes, sir. Pulse. Herbs, vegetable food in general. See that? Herbs and vegetable food. Herbs and vegetable food in general. So go back to Daniel now. So Daniel said, we don't want to eat the meat. Let us eat the herbs. Because why? The herbs are medicine foods. Herbs are medicinal foods. Read that again. Daniel chapter 1 verse 12. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give pulse to eat and water to drink. He said, I'm not going to drink the wine. Give me water. Give us water. Go ahead. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he says, after 10 days, you compare me and my brothers with the other Israelites. Those other Israelites that's eating the meat, drinking the wine. You compare us that only eat the herbs and drink water. Go ahead. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh. Then all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. So Daniel and them look healthier than the other Israelites. Go ahead. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. He gave them herbs. Wow, wow, wow. Give me Isaiah. We read Isaiah 65, 13. Give me that again, please. Book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 13. What time is it? Okay, go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. You shall be hungry, you rebellious Israelites. Go ahead. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. As you for you rebellious Israelites. Was that it? Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. So now, all praise to the Lord. So we brothers, sisters, we got, let's be prayed up, eat healthy, and work out. Can I get an amen on that thing? Amen. We used to scream black power. While Heron was pushed But at the end of the day Nothing's in vain IUIC Has been given a vision The tents of Judah has risen Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes Gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 
144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.